<laughs> There's so much smoke in that scene transition. <laughs> uh, welcome back uh, to the Texas TV Stormgate Showdown. We're going to be going into uh, Kiwian versus Clem coming up here. I think most likely Vanguard versus Vanguard. VVV. 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 Or as I like to say, v <laughs> <laughs> this is v sports. Um, so, uh, you know, I didn't think we were going to even have this matchup uh, to be cast in here. Yeah. To be honest, I don't know this matchup that well either. I haven't played Vanguard versus Vanguard since those were the only two races <laughs> in the game. Oh, my God. It's been a long time since I've seen a Vanguard versus Vanguard match. But, I mean, Clem versus Kiwian should be really exciting. These are two of the best players in the business. Clem has been killing it, not just in StarCraft 2, but also in basically every new RTS that is coming out. And uh, I'm excited to get into this one. As you guys can see here, we've got the brackets. Um, we already have the upper semifinals sorted. Parting versus Theory. Uh, probably the two players most likely to take the entire uh, event. The two teammates are going to be duking it out. One of them is going to be going down to the losers. Uh, in the lower bracket already, we've got Elazer versus Migi. By the way, Migi looking very strong. We kind of didn't know mm -hmm. what sort he of player good. this was going to be. A solid Chinese macro. It kind of reminded me of like a macro StarCraft II Protoss. A little bit like a stats in yeah, some Yeah, kind of, kind of. Um, so uh, that's where we're at so far. We're going into the lower bracket now. Kiwian versus Clem. And um, this should be a fun one. <laughs> oh, and look at that. Clem is actually going oh. to be playing Celestials. So it's CVV. Oh, okay. It's Never the code mind. on the back side of your credit card, boys. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, all right. So it's going to be Clem up here as Celestials. And it's going to be Kiwian, who's going by the ID top, his... Uh, Famous ID in StarCraft 2. Kiwian may be the best Vanguard player in the world, by the way. Yeah. It, well, he was he was probably the player that was closest to doing something against Parting in that big ECG Stormgate Open that we right. ended up casting. Right? Like, he, he actually did a, a really good job, had a nice close series there, and uh, ended up falling to Parting. But, yeah, he's... Uh, He's legit, and I want to see what he's going to be pulling out here because, you know, this guy This guy was, like, really famous at the beginning of StarCraft II. You know, he was a finalist in GSL, uh, was a strong pro for a long time, still is kind of active. And here you can see, like, he's going very, very quickly into a mech bay. Yeah, I think he wants to get those hedgehogs out mm -hmm. as early as possible because, really, they're the best chance here as Vanguard to hold off against the pressure that Clem is about to throw at him. He's already proxying his first production structure in the center of the map. This dog getting some damage on the collection array. Eventually, Clem is probably going to have to pop his uh, W from the top bar to try and defend that. But my real concern here for top is whether he's actually going to have enough hedgehogs out in time to deal with this pressure. First one has begun. So... From what I gather in my limited knowledge of this matchup, it seems like the hedgehogs are kind of the way to deflect all cheese. I actually encountered mm -hmm. Kiwian on ladder, and I was trying something that looks sort of like this, uh, and he totally wrecked me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I, this could be good because, to be honest, everybody's been losing to Celestial Cheese online, and this may be Kiwian giving us the antidote. I, I think it will be. Uh, hedgehogs do seem like a great anti-cheese unit. And in fact, there's some good hedgehog cheese as well, right? You make some sensor towers, put the bobs in them, and you can just kind of micro back and forth and get that free heal. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do because I know that Kiwian likes to play aggressive builds as well. Now, um, we should note, I think Argent versus Hedgehog, I think it is favored. The hedgehog, I think it's, it, you can actually kite the Ooh. Argent. You're like a little, yeah, bit, I think a little so. bit better range. <gasps> Wait. Is he going to kill a building? Oh, it's targeting the creeps. No. no! That's. That collection is going down. Oh, my Death God. Death by creep. <laughs> That's insane. I guess that that ability doesn't have a priority set. I guess not. So, yeah. That's crazy because they weren't even aggroed. So that's like. <laughs> It just Damn, draws man. them in. Look at this. And now he's just he just killed that off, too? There's Kiwian. Like, I would prefer to see how Clem looks, though. Is there... Yeah, I want to see the look on his yeah. face. They, you know, they probably felt bad. He's got tears in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we only show Bion on camera when that's happening. <laughs> oh, man, these Argents are getting destroyed right now by the Hedgehogs, too. What are they even going to get pulled down here? Dude, they're so fast. Look at those red shoes. <laughs> um, th this is like Kiwi and giving us a, a clinic on how to play, right? Like everyone's been talking about Celestials. Did you guys know about one base hedgehog? Yeah, I mean this looks uh, pretty solid. 
And I mean, think of how overextended you are with Celestials if this doesn't work, right? Mm. Yeah, you got the power structures in the front line. You're investing all these resources into the Argents. You already lost your natural expansion here as Clem. It's kind of do or die, but with four Hedgehogs out and the repair Yeah. I mean, yeah. what are you going to do here is Clem? I don't know how you breach this. Do you start throwing down some towers or what? Yeah, I mean, I think you do have to put down the towers, but you're like, Dude, even if he deals so damage, good. you just run him back. Look at this. He's healing everything. The hedgehogs are just slaughtering right now. And the fact that he already killed the base, like, even if this wasn't going as well as it was, or as it is, because we are in the present. Or as it will be. <laughs> or as perhaps future. it will be in the future. Yes. Yeah. Yes, all of these things. He killed the base. So, like, it, it feels like he's just so far ahead. I feel like that's basically it, right? I mean, I mean what does Clem GG. have? GG. Damn. Well, for the Vanguard players at home that have been complaining about this kind of early cheese, <laughs> well, you have a pretty good example of how to deal with it right there coming in from top. Man, Clem not going to be feeling good about that. But, I mean, how how would he know? I mean, he, he triggers that uh, ability that makes the Celestial ability to attack, and it pisses off the creeps, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that was that part was rough. I like that, though, because he leads with the dog and just attacks it and then brings in the hedgehog that's super fast that he makes, right? I love that he's canceling out or he's selling his uh, his barracks to kind of push his economy forward while he's doing this. Like, it seems like he has a lot of very good ideas here. It's funny. Um, we've had a couple games where players are kind of default counter-cheesing the Celestial. Like, mm -hmm. we saw Theory... Uh, I mean, you weren't cast this, but I don't know if you saw the game, but Theory like sent an, uh, an imp all the way mm -hmm. behind the starting yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, resource gathering structure and just made a shroud stone. And it's actually like, oh, yeah, because if you're rushing, this is how are you going to stop this, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, yeah. I, uh, are, 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 are we fighting right now? What's going on? <laughs> Am I wrong? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's very cool to see the kind of counterplay and the fact that even though the Celestial can rush, the fact that the rush has kind of a sluggish nature to it mm -hmm. with the, the um, key building coming forward, you can punish that. You know, even if Clem doesn't go for that kind of early pressure, the build from top is still really good at getting some damage on the other side of the map, too. I mean, should Clem have just gone for the expansion and played macro back at home? Then I think here is top. You do exactly what Artosis was saying, and you send maybe a couple of workers cross map. You build yeah. a repair matic and then you have this kind of anchoring point where your hedgehogs can basically just micro against the Argents all day. You really need speed Kree to take it down, but it takes a little bit of time to build up to that. Yeah, it's a strategy as old as time, or at least as old as uh, Stormgate Alphas have been. <laughs> <laughs> so Clem definitely going to be hungry to redeem himself here and have a cleaner game. Uh, and I think he certainly can. But um, it's cool to see Kiwi and have a real, uh, just a really good handle on how to deal with this race. Mm -hmm. And I think, look, Celestial has been, I think, predominantly populating the top of the ladder. I didn't check, you know, the, the last two days, but... Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of Celestials up works. there, man. Even, <laughs> even if they're not technically dominating the top of the ladder, they're emotionally dominating the top <laughs> of the ladder. <laughs> uh, and but sometimes the emotional truth is the real truth in real life, Tasteless, <laughs> as I think we've all learned. I, I, but I think the fact that Kiwian's able to show... Like, look, here's a way to deal with this. Yeah, This yeah. may force the Celestial players to kind of back down uh, or play a different style. <coughs> so it looks like we're getting, like, this full wall up right now. The dog has left. And where are we going with this guy? Shift clicked, right? Oh, okay. Oh. He's going to be a little bit of a lumberjack, Yeah, Bob. you're making a wall? Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I feel like this was a concept that was kind of, I guess, discovered by everybody pretty early on, on, on this map specifically. Yeah. You have a back entrance um, for the uninitiated. I know that bobs and imps can cut down trees. Mm -hmm. I don't believe, well, I guess you don't need to with Celestial, right? Because everything's floating. But um, <coughs> yeah, this is a, a way to, to basically break the position open. And I think in this build, it's one hit, right? Yeah, yeah. one hit That's to take insane, it out. That's insane, actually. Can you imagine <laughs> just chopping comical. down a tree with one hit? That makes it look Strength. easy, too. There's yeah. no power behind that swing. Like, they should Dude. really make Bob's attacking units. They can cut <laughs> yeah, trees down For real. Move. For real, man. I have a hard time pulling out a weed with one pull. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Archangel in the current build also cannot kill trees. Really? <laughs> like the, I oh tried to it, man, but the Bob just makes it look so easy. Vulcan has no problem, man. <laughs> Magmadons just stomp over them. Oh. Uh. 
Maybe if you do the descent, you can do it. But with a hammer, <laughs> they, they cannot club them down. Hey, I've not played that much Vanguard lately. Does the, the dog's um, ability that gives it a vision boost, that sees above yes. on high ground, right? Okay. Yes, it does. Does that, does that see over trees too? I think I so. think it sees it does, beyond right? trees. I yeah. believe so, yeah. Okay. Pretty sure. All right, you guys can cast the rest of this. I just wanted to know. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I just that you don't even question. know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I just had that one question. You guys take take the rest of this. Um, so right now, Kiwians got a couple more hedgehogs outside uh, of this base. In a lot of these builds, you go for a barracks immediately, and then you sell the barracks off because you don't use it. Mm -hmm. But right now, we still either the barracks was remade or he's kept it this game. But he's on one base play. So the point I'm trying to get at is that you need to have. Um, uh, basically an attack, a push that's going to come in and do a lot of damage. We see the wall in here for Clem at the entrance, but we know the trees have been knocked down. I don't think Clem knows this. No, he I don't think he has any idea. Right, we got to get a shot of Clem here as he's going inside of his base. Yeah, this is going to appear up there, and his base is going to fall. And... <laughs> oh, dude. That prism was just wrecked. And look at this. He's going to run out. He's given a lot of credit here to Clem to have the Argents walking <laughs> yeah, back. The Argents I'd have stayed in yet. there and been like, damn, I guess he was good. <laughs> <laughs> so he does a little bit of damage, but, I mean, the truth is he's not on enough um, bases to, you know, say that he's necessarily ahead. He's going to send the bobs down. It does seem like the number everybody wants to use. It's overcharged bobs, four of them into command post. So he's going to try yeah. to play catch up that way. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he'll be able to catch up pretty quickly. It's it, The economies function so differently in this game for the three different races. I still mm -hmm. feel like I don't have a great feel on uh, the celestial economy, right? Because it's like you <laughs> yeah. can get immediately that second base, but they're not mm -hmm. actually mining at that high of a capacity right yeah. away. So it's like, yeah, it's technically two bases, but like if you're just consistently making workers on your one, I feel like it's actually still pretty close economically speaking. I've been only playing Celestials since the game came out on Steam, and I still don't have a good feel for yeah, how the macro yeah, works. It is, it is so bizarre because, like, you take the numbers at face value. I think the Prism is 70, 70 Luminite a minute, and the main base, once you get set up, the collection array is 300. So, in theory, it's more cost-effective to make those, but it's very funky because... I mean, obviously, you train a worker, it's going to pop out a lot faster than you yeah. saving up 450 resources or 350. True to get the collection array set up. But I, I feel like overall, the economy just a uh -oh. little bit better. Oh, wait, what hold on top. Do? Man, they're so quick. Dude, they are fast. So now Clem could push out. I think there's been a decent amount of um, creeping here by Kiwi and all things considered. I don't know with the combination of Kree, uh, Argent, I don't, you cannot kite Krees with hedgehogs, right? When you they're kind involved of can. I think, it has to be I perfect. Think you can, you can't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It basically has to be perfect. It might not be an infinite kite or something like that. Right. right? But, but you could but probably eke out enough damage that you yeah. might think mm -hmm. twice. It, it, I think like hedgehogs are always good at kiting. Like they're all. It's always probably worth it to do it theoretically, but like obviously don't miss your macro or whatever. Oh my god! How much damage is that? That just Ooh. takes it out. Yeah. We're gonna have theory actually come in here and hop in. Um, and join the cast, uh, Theory Welcome. Wait, an Infernal player <laughs> casting a Vanguard for <laughs> Celestial match? What's up, Theory? How you doing, man? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Um, so what is your take on this game so far? Have you been able to see uh, it's from start to finish? Or uh, I saw the first game, but I haven't cut a lot of this game. But I noticed his natural is gone. Did it get killed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The hedgehog died. just ran in and right-clicked it, and it went away. Oh, no. It was crazy. I think in my mind, I always think of hedgehogs kind of like vultures in the kiting, but then mm. I guess they can actually destroy buildings too. Yeah, they're they're actually better against like bigger things. They have yeah. like that that, that burst damage kind of, which means obviously the Kree are going to counter them, as they counter most things, but most certainly not the skull squisher, as we found out <laughs> in Miggy versus. <laughs> <Terror. laughs> yeah. Okay, he's going to go in and try to do a bus. I feel like the spot looks pretty secure. Dude, that buzz setup. cock cannons. Yeah. Let's see Kree roll into that. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering for a moment if Clem was actually going to be able to break this because it seems like he is really slowing down, trying to recover his economy back at home and just <laughs> leaning into getting more aggressive and trying to get some counter damage done. But 
Top has threaded the needle so well in terms of sacrificing these hedgehogs to get economic damage done and having just enough in terms of static defense set up back at home. Now, he isn't going to be able to get that prism taken out, but the economy here for Clem is just so dismal relative to mm. Top in a stage in the game where as Celestials, you're expecting to be ahead of the Vanguard in terms of income pretty considerably at this stage. I mean, this is your map control stage. This is the time when it takes Vanguard you know, a couple more minutes to really build up and get some presence on the map, but Top doesn't need it. Theory, in your opinion, in, in this matchup for Vanguard versus Celestial, is there, a, I don't know, a race that seems like it's slightly favored, or is there a phase in the matchup where one race seems to be stronger than the other? Um, it's hard to say. I think it's very map dependent as well. Um, uh, a lot of the times you watch Vanguard, it'll look like they're in a dire position, but as soon as they get like Atlas out with Medivac, they can start to like take back control of the map. Um, it's kind of the AOE problem where Celestials kind of get bopped by AOE abilities. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then on the other side, if the Celestials can manage to forward the highest tech unit, the Archangel, yeah, then it could swing the other way very quickly. Interesting. Yeah, it seems like you have to just tech past it then. Um, well, this map, it always seems to lend itself to long games. It seems like no matter what the matchup, mm. it's, it's a, which I kind of like, by the way. I'm, I'm fine with some maps that let cheese in here too, but this does seem to be the macro map here, and this game is no exception. The, the bases all seem really well defended, right? Like, you've got, like, these long ridges that you can kind of be on and everything. And one of the biggest deals is this map has, the first three bases all have uh, Ethereum. Mm, Almost, I think right. no other map has that set up. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I guess that's true. If you have Ethereum at all, your three starting bases, it kind of lends itself to development, right? Instead of forcing it into, you know, mm. one direct, maybe you have to rush or make a bunch of tier one units because that's the only thing that makes sense. So with Vanguard here versus this, what is the, what is the tech you're going for? It seems like most games it's going to be a lot of, like, barracks um, massing up stuff. And then I guess you said Atlas later, but... Yeah, I don't know if it's totally figured out. I've, I've watched a lot of them. Um, uh, I've seen Top play this matchup quite a bit, or, or Kiwin, and I've also watched Albino play it a lot. I've seen a few different compositions work. I've even seen like Hornets work pretty well in this matchup, where you go snipe hmm. all the prisms um, and harass collect collection arrays. So I've seen air work, I've seen mech work. Um, if you're trying to go for early game aggression, I think Exo and Hedgehog is kind of the best map control option. Hmm. Well, he's mixing some Vulcans in right now, so seems like kind of a mixed composition, not really uh, committing to anything too heavily out the map. It almost feels like he's saving up for like a, a timing or something, because we just don't really see Top moving out to take more bases. It, wasn't that kind of how Top played StarCraft 2 as well? Yeah, Didn't he a have a bit. lot of two base plays, if my memory yeah. serves me correctly? Well, the further back you go in time, the more common that was, right? Like, yeah, that was... Where it's just like people are not expanding everywhere all the time. Yeah. Um, theory with um, Kiwi and compared to Parting, I mean, it seems like they're pretty close in skill, but does Parting win more versus Kiwi and the Kiwi beats Parting more? Um, it probably depends on the patch. I know the first patch, Kiwi won the tournament, like the Vanguard only phase. Oh, right, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, but I think <coughs> since then, Parting is um, one level above, or maybe multiple levels above everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would favor Parting on this patch. But maybe other patches, it's closer. Mm. I feel like, uh, I mean, for the different Vanguard players that, that I've watched, because I've played probably a bit more Vanguard than everything else at this point, uh, I feel like Kiwian plays a little bit different from everyone else. He has kind of more teched out openings and doesn't, like, like I feel like so many players just try to focus on getting a good exo ball up. But it doesn't feel like Kiwian's into that. The fact that he's adding in so many Vulcans into the mix. I mean, we have three, mm. maybe even four on the map right now before he takes that third base. It's so tech heavy. And I was right there with you thinking it's going to build up to a timing push. But mm. it actually looks like Clem, who's going to be setting up for basically a tier one timing with all of its economy. This is like the most swarmy it can get <laughs> here as Celestials. That is so many Kree, so many Argents. But top not overextending i don't think clem really has an angle and he's actually just going to go home yeah if you're playing like like he is right now and your opponent just sits there like this like puts buildings in the way you know makes some good sentry posts and like has vulcans just sitting there ready you can't attack into that yeah but i i feel like clem almost has to with the way that he's 
developing back at home because he's not taking up. He's not getting splash damage. And eventually, Top is going to come in with this basically super army against effectively the tier one here of Clem. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree, but like, I, the, I disagree that he has to attack. Like, mm. if, if you look at a position like this, you're like, well, I just have to attack. It's like, okay, well, I mean, why don't you just say GG now, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. why, why are we even going to bother? You may as well sit back and try a counterattack while you're attacking or, or, you know, getting great surface area as he walks out, you know, something like that. But attacking into that choke, I don't think would ever work. Yeah. Yeah, I think I... Oh, 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 hold on. He's going to move out. Okay, he can be flanked here, right? Were some of those Kree on the right? Yeah, I think they're at the third right now. Um, they could set up a nice surround. Yeah, he could actually sandwich this. Yeah, I think he was checking if there was a fourth or something like yeah, that. Yeah, mm. 100%. He's yeah, probably he surprised by the timing. Yeah. So there's a moment. Now, I don't know who wins. I, I, the math is very fuzzy for me on how this looks. He's going to do a counterattack. Oh, nice attack. And I, honestly, this is a pretty good idea. Yeah. You know, a lot of the defenses were salvaged here. It's like, what, one uh, Lancer uh, turret thing? So yeah. it's not enough. <laughs> Well, he's trying Ooh. to repair it, but yeah, this oh, army this is, is just so much better than what Clem has, and he's trying that counterattack. Like, I mean, this is basics of RTS. Your opponent gets a better comp than you, but you have a lot of units, so you do counterattack and try to slow him down, try to make him come back and defend. So he sends the rest of his army to the other location here as well, and Clem is dealing a lot of damage. Look at this. He is forcing Kiwi in to go home. Yeah, that was a beautiful counterattack. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, it kind of reminds me of a StarCraft 1 PVT where the Protoss just keeps running around the Terran's army. Um, and you can see it again. Well, there's so much damage yeah. that's being dealt right now. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Kiwian may have a better army, but he's not getting anything done with it. And it, it's totally fine to trade the Kree out like this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is exactly what you want. Like, he's killed a lot of bobs in here. He's killing buildings. He's forcing him back. But now, look at this. Kiwian... He walked down, then he walked back, and now he's walking back down. This is literally the worst choice you can ever make, is go back and forth three times. You have to be decisive. And now suddenly there's another army at home waiting for this. Yeah, you can see Clem in the middle of the map getting ready to set up for a huge surround on this army. Overcharge getting popped here at the third. And top, I don't know if he's ready for all these Kree about to steamroll in from the top side. Okay, Clem comes in, both sides right now. All the Argents as well, fully charged on energy. And Top's army, it's very high tech, but is it going to be enough? Dude, I don't think so. It, it, that Ooh, actually, what a swarm. I don't know yeah. if he can recover from this at this point in time. No, he's I mean, dead. That's it. Clem basically took no damage, did so much extra damage with his counterattacks. Look at that. I mean, the, the main is so barren and empty. Um, and now I think there's no way for Kiwi to expand. I mean, the supply right now for Clem doubles. Oh, look at that. Wow. <laughs> look at that formation. Dude. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. What is that? The flying V in Mighty Ducks? Like, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love that. He had it all trapped in the center yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. I call this move the Koi Pond. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I call it bad pathing, bro. Come on. <laughs> so the attack's going to come in here. I mean, I don't think Kiwian can last much longer and I love how Clem does this he just fractions off a little bit and does the same thing again create a small little fire that uh, you know Kiwian has to come and put out and that's going to be a GG wow. damn that in my mind that was a victory based purely off RTS fundamentals that was just uh, it was a better army a better opening by top or Kiwian and Clem just did the counterattack and then did a second counterattack and Kiwi and hemmed and hawed. And you can't do that. You have to be super decisive with where you're moving your army in these situations. Yeah, it's almost astounding that Clem was able to bring that one back, staying so low tech, especially after losing the natural expansion to four hedgehogs very early on. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if Kiwian had just pulled the trigger and just committed fully to the base trade, there might be a world where he's actually able to... Yeah, maybe deliver the win but just as you said i mean he went all the way back home he forced much of the army to retreat there from clem but at the cost of so much time it was maybe one or two more minutes before he was actually able to finally yeah. push into the expansions of clem and by then even with the low tech army that he had it was such a substantial amount of time where clem's economy was just so much bigger I, that was just a really surprising win. I thought that Clem was in trouble after sticking on Tier yeah. 1 for so long, but he navigated that map so well. It, it does seem like you have to actually have everything walled off.
Kind of like you see in PvZ and StarCraft 2 where like you can't you have to have something plugging up the entrance like an adept or a pylon mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. because if the Krees get in, they could do way more damage. And they're way more robust than Zerglings. So they're <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, what? They they're, are they're, like yeah. this. No, they're like zealots that roll like they're like, yeah, they're yeah, like, exactly. It's crazy. And, and they so, blow up, but they don't actually blow up until they blow up, and then they do blow up. <laughs> I know, I already know which race Artosis hates the most right now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd find I'm out. Just good saying TVP again. that Vanguard players Now we just got to figure talented. out which one his main is going to be, and then we'll know which one is the hardest. I think yeah. we already know which we one his main is going to be. Um it's the one that can repair its units. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to go into game three now. Uh, let's see. Is Clem going to do a rush uh, this time? Oh, Lucky. Okay. Oh. Wow. But Clem smiles. So he scanned his base right away. He got it. Got it oh, right I thought oh. he was, I thought oh, he was just being yeah. really it's rude. A, it's a good thing we have someone who understands this game over yeah. there. <laughs> no, I was wondering. Meanwhile, like, we're just showing that we can read and we know what emojis are. <laughs> <laughs> he also proved he knew which which spot to scan. The number of times I've scanned the, yeah, he did scan the corner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is going to be aggressive. So this is going to have to be one base hedgehog, right? Because mm. you got to scan. But the thing is, you don't know if he's going to scan cross spawn or he's going to span span ver oh, vertical, right? He's going to so, do morph core madness. Yeah, he's already got two he's out. Doing the morph core rush. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm a good person, so I actually haven't done this yet. <laughs> you haven't done this? I haven't done this, no. You haven't even lived. You haven't even played Stormgate until you've done the work for So us. hold on this a minute. This is going to be a lot are of you, fun. Are you telling me that you want to actually be good and understand the game and not just win ladder points at the very beginning? No, I want to do that. I just want to do it with Kree. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Kree rusher, Dan. <laughs> okay, okay. I just go for the different Gs. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, you got me. Oh, I, I played enough with, with Mothership Cores in Heart of the Storm. Listen, there's, I don't want these, there's different these levels flying of units. evil, so yeah. that's, that's fine. I've had enough Flying Cores doing little tickle damage yeah. to Terran units in the past. Oh, man. So, I mean, Kiwian's already in some trouble here. This can really start to snowball, especially once the Arc Ship gets in here. So we've got an Exo out here. Well, One thing you can do, first of all, it's not hard to kite with the morph cores, but it also seems like you just, right before it dies, you just turn the morph core into a building. Yeah, and then you could overcharge mm. it. Mm. I think he should do that to try to kill the Exo before it gets in the bunker. Yeah, I was going to say, like, shouldn't he just make a sentry post literally immediately when the Exo's coming out? Yeah, definitely. I think he was low on money, but uh -huh. now he's, if he can get that Exo in that turret, he's in a good position. And <sighs> staying out of range which is pretty good. But an another Exo is going to yeah. pop, yeah. Mm. So I, I really like his position, uh, Kiwin's position. Is there a way to pressure the command post? Is there a way to like just stay stay out so. of range of the? Because the Exo tower is, is actually crazy with the range. Yeah, it's probably going to be able to defend this. Yeah, I don't think he can quite hit the command post with the morph cores, can he? Oh, look at that! He switches to the repair. So smart. Even if he can't, I, I, yeah, that's right. Actually, that power up ability doesn't hit buildings. That's yeah. so easy to forget, but yeah. yeah. Or workers. Yeah. So, as long as the Exos are in bunkers, the overcharge is not going to be able to do much here. But is it possible to suffocate the position because you can't really make any more buildings? Yeah, there's no room for it, really. Well, the Exo has better range, right? So, like, uh, I like this micro from Kiwian. Yeah, and it does bonus damage to Argents because they're heavy. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. I, I really like Kieran's position here. If mm -hmm. he just plays patient, um, keeps building his economy, I think he can hold. Man, Kiwi in both in game one and game three, showing some really good play against these early pressure builds coming out from Celestials. <coughs> yeah, what I like about Kiwi is it just, it's very clear he has a, a plan. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not intuiting this. He, he just has seen this before. He's put in the hours. And so he can basically yeah. stay back and, and kind of... No, he's, he's been pretty full-time Stormgate <laughs> as much as yeah. he can. And he's one of those tryhards like that theory kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It, it's it's kind of crazy, though. Like, you know, he, he has basically a system in place for every kind of rush. And from uh, uh, Clem's position, it's just really hard to make anything work. You The entire investment... Just like a cannon rush, you know, in StarCraft 2. You've invested everything in making this work. Oh, my God. I love this. <laughs> okay, okay. So he sets up some buildings here so he can expand right next to Kiwian.
I mean, you've got to do something, right? You I can't just it. keep the attack up. This is yeah. great. Yeah, but this means that now I think Kiwian can just push the expansion, right? He should be in a, in yeah. a good position to do so. Yeah, you, you would hope so. <laughs> like he's he stopped like a five morph core rush that didn't kill anything. So like he should be able to counter push and win here. You would think. So for the time being, uh, actually the kiting is pretty good here. It seems like Clem's actually coming out. Uh, now I guess he's he's actually gonna get chipped mm -hmm. away at. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting shots here. God, this has got to be stressful here for Clem. He's just not able to do anything control-wise. The Exo is basically a superior unit. I, I think as Clem, it's not too stressful because you already know you're dead here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're like, uh, it didn't work. Like I gotta stay and, and try, but like, yeah, I don't I don't know if he'll try this type of build again. Not against Kiwi and I, this feels like Jack a build Ma, you'll kill someone that doesn't know exactly what they're doing. But it feels like this was the best scenario too. I mean, it was vertical spawns. He yeah. scanned immediately, and still Kiwi was able to hold on. And even with these Exos, I mean, the Micro has to be so precise, they just barely outrange these Argents, but Top is just able to get it done. So these power banks going down is going to limit the uh, options for Clem, right, as far as energy goes. So, I mean, the Achilles heel is kind of right there in the push. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's on three barracks now. Be a lot of exos. Is, it, is there any way to actually fight back from here, Clem? I don't think so. I mean, mm. I feel like you have to double down on your position, which just kind of accelerates the game to an end, right? Mm. Either Clem fights back and suddenly it's going to be Kiwi on his back foot, or this is just going to get worse and worse and worse, right? I just, yeah. I just feel like there's no world where the Argents are going to be able to kill those exos. You know, they might need to, for, for Celestials, they may need to add a, a cloaked unit so that they can come back from bad rushes like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with this. <laughs> yeah, we uh, need a dark shrine. I'm like, should, don't we think Clem should still have a 50% shot to win <laughs> after this failed rush, guys? Could I suggest uh, something that one-shots Bob's and is invisible? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be even better if it didn't give an uh, attack notification as it was killing <laughs> them. You have to notice. Yes. Yes, and they'd have to program that in because the game is new and good. <laughs> uh, I mean, we have a sizable amount of Argents. Just, I feel like the Exos, especially oh. now that they have their upgrade coming in. Okay, so that is a lot of Argents, isn't it? Soon. I guess it he, is a lot, but... He wants to sentry post push this, but it's hard to get the surface area to have the sentry post far enough out. But yeah, it feels like there's going to be diminishing returns here. That being said, Clem is mining from the spot. There is a um, idle morph core. We saw it a little bit ago. Uh, yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's right at like um, three o'clock. Does he have a third base at top at, at noon? Oh, he does. Oh, he does. Oh. What? Ooh. I love it. I love the hidden base. I love that he just has this giant group of Argents, and as soon as you try to make a building to push him, he comes in and kills it. It's so. Uh, it's uh, it, like he knows what he's supposed to do here to frustrate top. Yeah. Yeah. Like it should not end up working. I think. Yeah. But, uh, like, really, he's he's doing a great job of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed he's he's making this look close. Um, I don't know if he knows, but he can chrono boost his uh, creation chambers with power. Mm. Oh, yeah, um, that's he, a good point. He should un, un overcharge his uh, arc ship and put it on the barracks to make Argens faster. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. You know, the, the, the funny thing is, even though it looks like Kiwian's pushing out, uh, this is a three base celestial, dude. That is this, funny. It, it, I mean, it, it's. I think it's hard to wrap your head around it because we're used to seeing like a lot more infrastructure at bases, but you just need something on mm. top of that luminite patch to suck up resources. Because I'm zooming. Wait, it, it's long range mining. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they get so fast. It's yeah. so crazy how quick they are. Okay, so this may be the breaking point here. The XOs mm. could actually push out, especially mm. with the speed bushes. Speed bush. Boost, excuse me. <laughs> They're speed, speed bush, guys. Speed bushes? You read into that, whatever you will. <laughs> uh, and now, th okay, there it is. GG. Um, Clem is, is busted down. Interesting game. He went for that rush. It did not work out. You can see a frustrated Clem now.
Yeah, both game one and game three, Clem trying these early cheesy builds, and even in game number three, getting the vertical spawns, getting the instant scan, identifying the position there of his opponent, and still not able to make it work. Top has been showing the most clutch Vanguard defensive mm -hmm. Celestial Cheeses I think I've seen yeah. anyone play so far here in Stormgate. And it's impressive because this game, this iteration, especially this build, is so new. Yeah. The fact that in the past couple of days, he's been able to basically formulate a plan to deal with all these curveballs that Celestials like Clem are throwing at him. And I mean, let's not forget, Clem is one of the best RTS players in the world, bar none. Yeah, I mean, sure. he's right up there with parting in terms of cheesy builds coming out from Celestials, so... Yeah, but but parting wow. is more like the Sith Lord with, like, the, <laughs> the hood, and so maybe Kiwi has learned from playing against him on the ladder and everything, right? It, Where it's, it, like... It's possible. Been training he's, he's gone through the grinder. <laughs> yeah. The, what is the, uh, the DBZ, like, hyperbolic chamber? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Goku would train him. Yeah, that's been... That's been Kiwi and practicing with parting for a while. Mm -hmm. you know, the more I see these games, the more I feel like maybe you can't really cheese against top-level Vanguard if they have answers like that. It didn't seem like there was any easy out for Clem. He definitely made it last a while, but it was pretty clear that Clem was uh, in a good spot. Yeah, maybe if or, he um, had been going Kiwi for like a quick spot. command post or something, right, mm -hmm. then I bet you that rush probably just kills him, right? But uh, if you're going to go for the, the quick barracks, you're going to have enough units to be able to hold it, I think. Yeah. Uh, we're ready to go into the next game now. Um, oh, my favorite map. Oh, oh wow. Oh, Jagged Maw. Okay, it's okay. going to work. It's okay. Clem's got this. We're going to game five. <laughs> he should type lucky now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Morph Core Madness. Let's do this. So this map, um, this was basically in the map pool before Celestial existed. Um, but it's, it's, I think there's some fundamental design issues now with Celestial the way it's made uh, you can basically just swoop into their base and start rushing now I don't know maybe there is an answer to this but it, it looks very strong right if top can stop this rush <laughs> I will be very impressed do you just go sentry post here is he gonna try to go axos I think he, yeah, yeah he's making a lab hmm. I'd like to see uh, Clem make a building and immediately overcharge him don't let the exo get out of that barracks Mm. If he can snipe it, I think he just wins. But if you do that, can they attack it with bobs and take it down before the Exo finishes? That's a good question. He won't be able to mine and afford the Exo and the bunker. Yeah, yeah, it might be too expensive. Tough. He's really tight on resources. Yeah. I mean... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, he denies that. <laughs> well, That's one sentry post not going to go up. Let's see what this exo can do when it's out. I think the uh, writing's on the wall. How many? How, how far into this game are we? Is this a minute? <laughs> it feels like a minute, yeah. yeah. Exo's about halfway done now. Now he's going to go. He's going to try to just power this down. Let's see which one makes it faster. Overcharged Bob's, or what is this, four? More fours, right? It's just barely getting oh up. Oh my god. It is oh, barely no, 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 getting it's up. Oh, is oh. justice going to prevail or is evil going to win? <laughs> well, evil moves to the right and keeps attacking <laughs> the bobs. I don't know if you call this justice. He's just pushing back the arc ship and, <laughs> and losing all of his workers. Well, if he gets another sentry post, the second post one, up, the second one. If he gets another sentry post set up on the oh. Luminai mine, oh my god! Now he doesn't have another exo. Oh, he does Dude, have another exo. No! Oh yes! my god! <laughs> I can't believe it. Is another exo going to come out? He's not making one, right? He doesn't have the resources. And now we have Argents attacking it. Don't worry, he is mining with one bob. <laughs> Well, His economy is fine. If he takes out this bio lab <laughs> on the bottom right, he can't make exos. That's another oh way you could lose. Gosh. There's a lot of ways you can lose this game. Losing the exos is so brutal. All right. Well, that's what I call Stormgate. <laughs> um, Jagged Maw is such a great map. <laughs> Jagged Maw, guys, for life. Well, you know, yeah, that Bionic Connect slab is going to go down. Bug. Uh, he said bug. Did somebody say bug? And then... Clem went, oh, <laughs> and now, all right, I'm, I'm appreciating this play by play. <laughs> I'm just showing you guys I can read. Did, is he saying something went wrong good? with the game, or is that just a harsh insult to, yeah. to Clem there? Is he trying to say you guys all look like ants uh, up here? <laughs> well, he might have actually yeah. had a bug. He's pointing at the computer. Yeah. And Gesturing to the referee. He's like, he got to my happened. base so quickly. What? Yeah, yeah. There's no right. way yeah. this yeah. man right. starts like, out with a flying building. This can't be the game, right? <laughs> But he can build things while it's flying? Yes. 
it's uh we're gonna figure out what's going on by the way with um with Kiwian. I don't know what the uh Yeah, I don't know what the bug would, would be in that situation. Maybe he couldn't garrison the Exo in the sentry post or something. That's the only thing I, I can know. think of, but so uh, there it was, it was the Exo was being shot as it went up, then it looked like it loaded, and then there was not it, there was nothing there. Oh, did it die in the bunker? I've seen this happen. I, yeah, I think that's, that's what happened, happened oh. because oh. I saw the gun turret come out oh. and then and it, then it mm -hmm. just went away and he didn't have one. So I was like, oh, that's really Yeah, that's probably what happened. Yeah. Yeah. I was I hyped so. because I thought he actually got the Exo in and then yeah, I was like, Wait, like no, it. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> there clearly uh, isn't an Exo in that anymore. Definitely the animation of the turret came up, but mm. then it went away. Huh. I didn't know that was a bug. You know every bug, huh? Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Is, yeah. You play this I'm game just, all day, huh? You must really like this game. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was this actually is... teaching a laser how to like abuse creep camps earlier. Oh yeah, mm. <laughs> not for this tournament. But. Oh, did you show them that thing on the high ground of uh, Broken Crown? <laughs> I'm not gonna spread. Um, <laughs> the, the, Come on, help us evil. ruin the ladder. This whole tournament <laughs> yeah. is doing that right now. There, there's a crazier bug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there? Are we gonna see you no, no, do it in the no? I read the rules and it was like no bugs in this tournament. So, well, come on. <laughs> what is a bug really, right? I know. Yeah. Now we get our yep. rules lawyering out. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're still waiting uh, to see what what's going on here. No updates yet, guys. But um, I don't know. Right now, it looks like that Morph Core Rush is very strong on Jagged Maw. Yeah, Jagged um, Maw is a rough map. Well, this is why we have a bunch of different maps like this. Is now we know. Right, it, especially in a tournament like this, we go okay. So, that seems to be something pretty tough to stop. Mm -hmm. Probably you need to have a certain distance, or I guess I mean if you wanted to change that map, I guess air blockers, something like that, where they can't. Yeah, yeah, go. you have to fly around maybe, yeah. or the air has to go around the same. Maybe way you that can garrison would. your bobs, and it's like Age so of Empires. So I guess something. we're we're in game five. <laughs> Please guys. no. <laughs> <laughs> I played okay. too much Age of Empires. I do not want to go back. It, it was deemed that the. Um, Series will continue on. So this is Clem versus Top, the final game. Okay. Okay. Um, and this game, it looks like it's, it once again is Clem moving out. So when you see fast expand with this, it can still mean a rush, by the way. Um, what? Just to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, they can, they can expand it's, and it's, all it's in called, at the same time? It's called time? fast expand into all in. <laughs> this race really is Protoss. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are they teching at the same time? Yes. And taking a third? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we saw Kiwi and handle most of these rushes pretty well. So generally speaking, what he does is he gets a barracks, gets a, um, is it machine machine shop? Is that what it's called? The mixed factory? Biokinetics? Oh, I mean, yeah. Mech bay. Mech bay. Mech bay. Okay. Um, so basically you go into the mech bay. Oh, no, he's going to fast expand, though. Ooh. Okay, so never well, his, mind. Yeah, his dog did see what was going on with the expansion, so I yeah. guess he's decided he can go ahead and do this. Okay, so this looks like the rush I was trying to mess with. Is this a double um, Argent rush? Mm -hmm. I think I think with this you make a third. Um, what is this? Uh, can we click on creation this? Creation chamber. Creation chamber. Thank you. Sorry, guys. This game's still still so new. Well, third creation chamber. You set that as the default. Before a few <laughs> hours ago, I was pretty sure that was an upgrade building. So. <laughs> So there's going to be a pretty good launching pad to push forward. I guess if he commits, if he, if he chooses to send the arc ship out and try to make that, maybe this is one where he just makes the two creation chambers and plays a passive game. Well, I think if you're pumping out two archers at once. That's Th a Theory, is this a rush? Uh, I don't think so, just because the, the uh, arc ship's at home. He's probably just going to send it back to his main and mine gas, I would think. Oh, take a third. Because the one downside is um, you can send your arc ship out to like heal units, warp in things, but you've essentially kind of forfeit your fast gas mining because you have no collection point for gas no. now. Oh, he's chrono boosting his barracks this game. You can kind of see it uh, glowing. Mm. It almost looks like it's been powered down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that tripped me up so much the first time I tried. No, that uh, happened to me when I was trying to rush. I'd do it. I'd be like, damn it. No, I messed up. <laughs> Okay, so a little bit of kiting here on that Lancer. Um, a lot of these games now with the Vanguard, we see a sentry post set up in kind of a turtle position. Um, but you got to be careful. The Argents don't have great range, but they do have enough range they can kind of play keep away from that. And keep in mind, the Argents attacking structures like this, it does use their energy. So they are yeah. losing those shots where they're going to have bonus damage, which really limits their DPS. So for Clem, you're just going to back off instead. 
And behind this, I think he's setting up to take a third base. Yeah, there is the Morph Core moving on to the third expansion. And my big question here watching Clem play is when is he actually going to start mining some Therium? Because surely eventually he's going to transition off of these Argents, right? I mean, he's moving back again into the natural expansion here from top. He's going for Bob's. He's going to try to take this down here. It seems like he has exactly the wrong number of Argents. They uh, exactly yeah. don't one shot a Bob. 90% mm. it and then yeah. way overkill. <laughs> Yeah, I really like this pressure. It's kind of like forced an overreaction, pulling a Bob's while Clem is really powering out economy back home. He might do that tier one mm. Zerg style we saw in the first game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like you're right. Just like the mask Kree after this and, and mm. run around with it. I bet it's really good on this map. Yeah. Is there a reason why? Yeah, I was going to say, is there a reason why he hasn't expanded to the center yet? That seems I think there's like never a reason to not take that yeah. as, as Celestial. The number of games where I just. My rush isn't working, but I'm like, oh, there's islands on this map. Yeah. I'm just yeah. going to yeah, take this right away. Well, now coming in on the Ethereum. Seems like Cree production will be starting for Clem pretty shortly. So, I mean, yeah, I think you're right, Theory. He's really turtled up. This does seem like an overreaction. Uh, granted, this is a base. I mean, you have like al almost 180 degrees to protect yourself from there. He kind of played like this on Broken Crown, though, where he looked really turtly and just made a very good comp and then took a third, which, like, I can get behind that to a certain degree, right? Like, if you're if you're kind of like a stronger mid-game, I have better micro, more cost-efficient units, it's like, yeah, I, I, I'm okay with, like, seeing a lot of defense put up and then maybe just get rid of it a little bit later. I feel like on this map especially, you really have to respect the explosive potential of the Kree because if you take that third base too quickly, it is not a short walk from a natural expansion here to the third as Vanguard. Mm, and those true. Kree, if they get a surround, even on a ton of Exos, <laughs> yeah. I mean, surface area is everything for those units. And for Clem, it's, or not for Clem, for, for Top, it's going to be really hard to take that third base up until he's able to actually get a sizable amount of forces on the ground. So. Actually, speaking of which, Theory, what do you think is the best counter to the heavy Kree for our, for Vanguard here? Um, it's hard to say. Um, I've I've seen Albina do pretty well with Hornets. Um, really? Because you can kind of snipe prisms and harass afterwards. Oh yeah. Um, but that's a lot of bunkers. This game, Kiwi has the kind of the same issue I have. We're, we're also new to this game that we don't know like all the different Kree timings. Like, oh, are they gonna hit me with like four Kree and just kill me? Or are they going to hit me, wait a little later and hit me with 20? <laughs> I'm just going to make five bunkers or 10 shroud stones and yeah. just be safe. safe. Like, yeah, I yeah. feel like he has the same mindset as me. Like, I'm not confident, so I'm just going to play safe. Mm -hmm. They're hard to deal with. Very hard. Yeah, no doubt. So we're just seeing Clem basically begin to sweep the map. He's making sure to just take out every creep spot. Um, I mean, it, it's like the turtling has almost doubled down here for Kiwian, which is kind of funny. Like, we went back there. Was that like, what, six? Defensive structure. Yeah, for Kiwi. yeah, it's a good. it's a huge amount. Yeah, five, I guess. But yeah, I mean, he's really, really defended. Yeah, the issue is for Kiwi is that if we had say a dozen Kree on the map right now, these Exos die. They just die straight up, and Wacker's mm -hmm. round comes in, and so he kind of has to play this really defensive style up until he has enough of a bio ball that he can kite away from the Kree effectively, because he doesn't have complete information. He is getting scouting information here with uh, with the dog in the front, but. What he's seeing is something that is very scary. He's seeing a lot of Kree banking up at Clem's front door. And so here for top, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him just now start to come into that third base, even though we're, I, mean, I wish, kind of wish we had a, a timer in this one, but it feels much later than he did earlier on in this series. Because I mean, the, the Vanguard army is just so fragile early on. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is, yeah. It's very Terran esque, sure. and like there's just this brittleness. But if you get enough of the right pieces, it can start to be a real threat. Um, so, I, I mean, unless I'm missing something, I mean, Kiwian continues to turtle up. And uh, how many bases are we on exactly at this point in time for Clem? We see one, I believe it's four, two, three, four. That's it, right? Nothing oh. else. Oh, only four bases. <laughs> oh, that's not so bad, guys. Don't worry about it. He's going to take a fifth one over here, though. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
was actually talking to Clem about this because he was asking, oh, what's more efficient, prisms or collection rays? So I was telling him, like, well, if you have map control, just make collection rays. Yeah. Um, and that's what he's doing. He's going to be so rich. Um, this, um, the ROI on collection rays is much higher. And with how defensive Keegan's playing, Clem's going to have a really massive economy. He, I, I feel like... Okay, this is this is kind of my my own little oh. bias about how to how to play Vanguard, but I'm like, whenever they get the whole map, I'm like, I need a lot of atlases. This is what we need to do. We need to make so much <laughs> splash damage that my opponent is a moron if they attack into me. <laughs> Can we see Kreese win this? Look at this. This is the oh best creeping I've ever seen safe. in my whole life. Did you see that? Yeah. He scared. He, they saw the Kree and they're like, we have to go to heaven right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think like in a engagement, the Kree aren't super powerful. The issue is they can be anywhere they want because they have 50 armor while rolling. Mm. So like you can't kill them while they're rolling. is very it's very difficult. No, I was trying to think actually in my head like it, you know they're rolling around the ground. What would be like uh, the right way to find a counter to this that feels correct for the game? And the only thing I came up with is spreading Legos on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, my back. Oh, my God. 50 armor doesn't do anything that's piercing Lego pieces. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I mean, with Kiwi in this spot, I mean, the, the more bases that are taken here, as long as Clem could keep up with um, Ethereum, uh, mining, I mean, it, it's going to get out of control. It's going to get insane here. I mean, it, it, there is no burden on Clem to close this game out right now. It feels like it's going to be all up to Kiwi and to push out and actually push all the way across the map. I mean, we already saw this with Clem before, that he was very good at kind of the fundamentals. You were mentioning Sartosis, mm. counterattacks, even yeah. with just Kree and running in there. I do feel like this game could go in that direction. We could end up with that same game. Sure, sure. But we have Atlas is coming out now with Evacs, and that's pretty crazy. Like, Atlas Evac is uh, a great combination, obviously. And, you know, honestly, like, I feel like if you get enough of the Atlases, you upgrade them and everything, it's like, that is, I don't, I don't know if there's anything on the ground that actually beats that. The Atlas? Yeah. Um, yeah. If it's, you just have a lot of them, it just seems like they, they scale so ridiculously. Right. And if you get, like, a bunch of Atlases and a bunch of Medivacs, mm -hmm. there doesn't seem to be a lot of, like, great air control to kind of lock it down. Yeah, yeah. This but is so annoying here for Clem. <laughs> I think the only unit at this stage in the game that Celestials have that can kill these trees is one of the cores. Really? I'm pretty right? sure. <laughs> Too bad he made them all into bases. Oh, ah, no! idiot! <laughs> he didn't even lift it up. I th so yeah, I think Does Celestials he know that he can like lift it off? Because I just learned this like uh, you know, my last game before. Wait, you can lift those off? Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah. Lift them off. <laughs> no, I <know. laughs> fraud. Well, I think Clem doesn't know. Somebody <laughs> go tap on his shoulder and tell him. Yeah, yeah, we. What is Kiwi going to do? Say bug? He can't stop us. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is where Clem says bug. They're like, yeah, that is a bug. He should be able to lift that off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the issue now for Clem is that Top has this bio ball that can actually really mm. fight <gasps> That's oh. against these Kree. He has to be careful, though. I mean, if they get a full surround, it still is going to go Clem's way, but Clem's going to need to get oh his. Oh, he has so much more than I thought oh he did. Look at this surround. God. What a sandwich coming through. Oh my god, that is crazy. This is the dream engagement here for Clem. That is just so many Cree. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Here I, mean, I was thinking Top might be able to micro back and kite, but... Well, there was Ooh. nowhere to micro to. Clem just had twice as many Cree as I thought he they, did. They <laughs> just, like, no. <laughs> well, they had the perfect surface area. Everything was doing damage. They All had, right. They had to do what those creeps did when they saw the Cree. They're like, no, oh, no. <laughs> they had to go to heaven. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that is, that is many Cree, yes? Yes. That's many Cree. All right. Well, um, I think we're going to see GG in a second here. Yeah. There it is. Man. God damn. I'm All good. that buildup. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, I keep wondering when the game is we're going to see Tier 3 Celestial, and I don't know if it's at this tournament. <laughs> yeah, it might not be. You might just want to go Mass Cree. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Clem comes out on top. I got to say, Kiwian was really impressive uh, in the yeah, series, yeah. but I think, you know, Clem kind of winning with those, um, I don't know, it was like really solid RTS fundamentals versus yes. really mapped out early game. 
but you know if that early game yeah. didn't, didn't win the game, it was there was nothing you could do. I think that was perfect analysis, actually. It was, like that was it, that's exactly what we saw. I love that you're saying it like that with my name back here and yeah. everything. This is a <laughs> like esports <laughs> banana republic over no here. No wonder this you're is right, the tasteless, tasteless you're so TV right. showdown. <laughs> we defer Seriously. to you. Clem, have a seat over here, buddy. But yeah, no, that was that was some great play. All right, we've got Clem here now. Clem, here you could take the mic. Congratulations. Um, you managed to defeat Kiwian. What are your thoughts right now? Um, that was pretty unexpected for me. Um, yeah, I think if I played the first match of the day, I would have gotten completely owned. But I watched Parting, and I think <laughs> I learned a lot from watching Parting. So <laughs> that, that, that kind of helped me a lot, yeah. We, we could tell when you weren't mining any Ethereum for like <laughs> <laughs> that, you, that you were watching Parting. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was. So wait, I have to ask you about that last game. You know that the collection array is in the middle of the map. You know they can fly, right? They can lift back up. You know that the collection array can take off? Oh. <laughs> like, I think someone told me that, but I didn't figure out how to do that. <laughs> we were watching the, we were watching the, uh, the, the siege tank type unit just kind of uh. blast them, and we're like, well, surely he's going to lift these up at some surely. point, right? <laughs> but, uh, uh, no. So that was fun. <laughs> coming up next, you're going to be versus, uh, let's see, either Probe or Nightmare. Do you have a preference on who, who you would like to face, and do you think you can beat one of those two players? Um, I, I played against Nightmare a few times. Last night when I was uh, warming up and practicing a, bit, a little bit for the tournament, um, and I was doing like 50-50 against him, and I feel like he might be harder against Probe, so um, I think I would feel more confident against Nightmare. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure who's favorite in that one. Yeah, I, I feel like we could all agree that we don't know who should take that, right? It looks like a really close match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I actually want to ask you about your overall unit composition because it felt like you were just relying on your fundamental RTS understanding, like especially on Broken Crown. Mm. It felt like he got way ahead, had a better comp than you, mm. and you had this garbage composition, so you just kind of like did counterattacks until you won the game. Yeah, my unit comp is making one unit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, wa he was playing very campy, right? Like trying to get a good army and uh, very few bases. So it was very hard to do anything. But um, but yeah, I, I was like, okay, if I take uh, all of the bases on the map, um, surely I would have enough units to uh, to kind of overwhelm him. And uh, yeah, it's what happened when he pushed in my base. But I still had some units on the map, so I can kind of flank him mm -hmm. um, at the bottom and then some overcharges. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, in my mind I was like, okay, I'm just gonna counter attack until until he loses his eco, and then mm -hmm. uh, kind of like how um, Zerg players sometimes do. If they play like Link Ben Mura in in, yeah. in ZVT, they mm -hmm. they just counter attack and uh, and they try to kill your economy, and then they they have like more bases, so then end up having more stuff. Yeah. So I have to ask: Is there is there any stage in that matchup where you're going to? Tech past the tier <laughs> one, Argents and Cree, or is that just your bread and butter? I'm not that advanced yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like tasteless. All the best gamers. I don't mind the theorem. I just I only get the Lumina. <laughs> that's it. That's this all I is want. Your, this is your next that's step up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about the like the like the um, the sorcerers, like the, the one that that do like the yeah, storms. Yeah, the animators, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this ones this ones look really good, but uh, I I need more practice with them <laughs> before I can actually use <laughs> he them. Yes, and unlock that part. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's like he's playing the campaign. He's like the first couple of missions. He doesn't have all <laughs> yeah. the units. He has to win with only Argent and Creed. I only the, the first two for now. We'll, 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 we'll see later. About it. Well, Clem, congratulations oh. on advancing. Do you have anything you want to say to your fans that are watching a, uh, at home? Oh, I hope you're enjoying uh, the Stormgate games, and uh, thank you for watching. And yeah, this is cool. Excellent. Well, best luck to you, Clem, uh, down the road here. Guys, we're going to be going to a short break. We're going to plug Ugly Tasteless merch. Grab a shirt, guys. Hold it up. Ugly Tasteless uh, merch? Don't be so mean to yourself, Tasteless. Beautiful Tasteless merch. We Just will Tasteless be back. merch. <laughs> we will be back uh, in, what, maybe like about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit more, with the next match here to close out the round of eight. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.